artificial intelligence is all over the news. Deep learning, self-driving cars, robots will take over the world, you name it. But it really boils down to three main categories. AI is the paradigm of computing to get machines to be as smart as humans. Machine learning is a subfield of AI. It's about learning from data to derive rules and detect patterns instead of being explicitly programmed by humans. And deep learning is a specific machine learning technique using deep neural networks, which is really good with high dimensional data like voice, image, and videos. But maybe you're asking yourself, what does this have to do with ArcGIS and my work in 2018? Do we have machine learning in ArcGIS today? The answer is yes. We do have machine learning tools in ArcGIS, and we can integrate with deep learning and machine learning engines as well. You can use the existing machine learning tools in ArcGIS for three main things, predictions, clustering, and classification. For example, for prediction, you can use geographically weighted regression to predict the impact of global climate change on local temperature. For clustering, you can use space-time cubes to analyze the fading and emerging hotspots across space and time for a phenomenon like accidents. And you can use support vector machines for classification to classify in previous surfaces from high-resolution imagery to better plan for flood. In addition to that, ArcGIS can integrate with machine learning and deep learning engines as well. And that's what I want to show you today. We are going to use ArcGIS Pro with scikit-learn of Python, a powerful machine learning engine, to predict the accident's probability per segment per hour in Utah. And before jumping to machine learning, we asked ourselves, what could cause an accident in the first place? Is it more like weather factors like snow, rain, and fog? Is it temporal aspects like time of the day, day of the week, rush hour maybe? Is it spatial aspects like proximity to intersections or the road width or the road curvature? There might be tens of variables. And the kind of data that we need to train our model is really large. We're talking about seven years of data, accidents data, 400,000 accidents, 500,000 segments. It's nearly impossible for any human to analyze this manually and find the deep correlations and predict. But what about passing all of these data inputs to the machine to let it help us to find the patterns and predict those risk segments? We're going to do three main things. First, we're going to use ArcGIS Pro to prepare our training data and explore the data. Then we're going to pass it to scikit-learn to train a machine learning model. And finally, we're going to see the predictions visually using ArcGIS Online versus the actual accidents. So why don't we just see this in action? So we bring in all of these data points to ArcGIS Pro. We grab in the road network layer, all of the collisions. We spatially join them with the road network layer. The average daily traffic, as you can see, it differs according to segment. The intersections, whether they are signalized or not. We get weather feeds from about 27 weather stations at Utah. And you can notice that many accidents are happening near intersections. And many of them are happening on roads with high curvature. So we extract those spatial features, like road sinuosity and proximity to intersections and speed limit and others. And finally, we add the billboards data set to see if there is correlation between the location of billboards and accidents. And all of this data processing and preparation could be automated in Jupyter Notebooks using Python. So we use the ArcPy to start creating our geodatabase, extract the data from online and offline sources, the data of accidents, intersections, and others, and start doing our spatial feature extraction. So for every segment, we want to calculate the proximity to intersection, the speed limit, the degree of sinuosity, and many other spatial parameters. And finally, we join the weather feeds and accidents to the road networks. Now we have our training data ready. We start passing it to scikit-learn to train our machine learning model. We use the Python API to do this. We import scikit-learn, and we start loading our training data set. So as you can see, for every accident in the last seven years, we have about 40 different spatial weather and temporal feature. Temporal features like hour of the day, week of the day, month, 
Spatial features like sinuosity and length and proximity to intersections, and weather features like snow, raining, foggy, and more. One thing to mention that it would have been extremely challenging to prepare this training data set and extract those features without ArcGIS Pro. We have used lots of geoprocessing functions to prepare this data set. Now we are ready to train some models. We're using a powerful machine learning algorithm called gradient boosting. Not only it's good with predictions, but also with explaining why those predictions are happening. We split our data into training and test data, 90% training, 10% testing for validation. We play with some hyperparameters, like the number of trees in that model, the depth of each tree, and some other factors. And we finally start training our machine learning model. And this is the first out outcome of the model. These are the top factors behind accidents based on the data that we have analyzed. You can see that there is lots of weather factors like temperature, visibility, and wind speed. Temporal factors like hour of the day or month of the week. Spatial factors like seniority or average daily traffic or the road being one way or not. Now, we want to see the actual predictions of that model. We want to calculate the risk score per every segment and see if the actual accidents actually did match that. Today is December 3rd. It's snowy, it's icy, and it's raining. And we want to see the area of Woods Cross. So our model predicts that the interstates, the highways, and some inner roads have some risk. The color reflects the risk, the red being the highest, green being the lowest. Orange is still risky, but not as red. So where did the actual happens happen? Here we go. We find that nearly all of them are happening on those segments that we have predicted with high score. You can see that they are happening on the interstates, the highways, and some internal roads, like this one here, for example, and that one here, happening on this inner road, which is curvy. Let's go to the area of South Salt Lake. It's near to downtown, and we expect lots of accidents. So our model predicts that the interstates and highways has higher risk, and some inner roads. You notice that this area is a bit greenish. This area here is, has more risk, and the actual accidents actually happened on the highways and many of the inner roads as well. You can see a pattern here that many of those accidents, especially in the uh, inner roads, are happening near to intersections like this one, that one, and this one here. Finally, we can see the area of South Valley Regional Airport. These are the predictions, and those are the accidents. Again, happening on the highways and some inner roads, this curvy road. We have used machine learning to understand why accidents happen and predict the risk per segment. And that's one application. We have many other applications. We have used deep learning with satellite imagery to detect objects at scale. And we have used it, actually, with historical origin destination data to predict accurately the arrival times of vehicles. And we have used machine learning with GPS traces from vehicles from some oil companies to automatically detect new road segments and automatically register them to the network. Thank you.